Breakdown is presented by John's Sewer and Drain Cleaning, the name to know when the drains don't flow. What is up and welcome into the breakdown. Phil Perry here, Ted Johnson there. A week seven, a victory edition of the breakdown. The Patriots with a big win over the Bills at home. A lot of talk about belief mm -hmm. in the Patriots locker room last night. Ted, Mac Jones wants people to believe in him. Bill Belichick wants his players to believe in each other. If you're a player in that locker room right now, are you believing more in the overall operation and specifically in the quarterback after yesterday's win? Phil, I don't know how you're not. So these guys, are you kidding me? They, they said all the right things. I think Mac was doing all the right things, getting to work early, staying late, doing all the film study. But really for guys to believe in him and buy in to the quarterback, you have to go out on the field and do it. And Phil, he certainly did. Great comeback win for him. Showed these guys that he's got some guts. He has some moxie. And he's backing up what he's been saying all summer long about his abilities. We could call it belief. We could call it buy-in. We could call it confidence. Whatever you want to call it, Mac Jones deserves a little bit more after yesterday. Sunday was one of his best games of his young career. The first time in his career that he's led a game-winning drive when trailing in the fourth quarter. Also the first time he's ever won a game when the Patriots opponent has scored at least 25 points. Mac's individual numbers, too. The third highest passer rating of his career. Like I said, it's just a crumb and just keep picking up those crumbs and eventually you have a whole whole loaf of bread. So <laughs> that's my goal. Uh, just continue to work, continue to uh, be Mac, like I said, and um, it's just one game, right? Uh, you know, I always say that regardless of the results. So got to, you know, do it again. Got to uh, fight every day and practice hard. Yeah, I don't think, you know, the a lot of the talk and stuff that happens with him is fair honestly i think he's, he's done an unbelievable job kind of blocking all that out and i think he's done an unbelievable job internally leading us throughout all that adversity um and today you know back against the wall and you know you hear all the talk about us with a chance to win the game and we can't close and all that kind of stuff and today you know we had a chance and you know he he stood in there and you know delivered play after play after play and ultimately you know we won the game um off of a you know, several great plays, but ultimately off of, you know, a great ball by him. And Mac Jones did deliver. So did Mike Kosicki, and that's going to be the focus of our technique. Technique, of course, presented by Shaw's. Shaw's is perfecting the art of fresh. So happy to have with us now some Needham Rockets. We've got Sean. We've got Colin. We've got Andrew. And, Ted, you're going to break down that game-winning play, critical situation, obviously, as critical as it gets mm -hmm. down by the goal line. What the Patriots do to make it work? Yep. So, uh, they did a really good job of scheming this play up. So, uh, Sean and I are going to be on the defense. We're, we're playing. We're the Buffalo Bills in this scenario. And we got Colin here playing Mike Gusecki. Okay? Mike Gusecki was in the slot, uh, which was an interesting. That's They, they put their tight end in their slot positions in this formation. That's the, the matchups they liked the all game. And so obviously it worked uh, right here. Okay. And so I'm Teron Johnson. I have, I have Mike Kosecki man to man. I know I'm, I got him man to man, but I know I have help. My man, Sean right here, who's my safety inside. Okay. So I'm going to play outside leverage. Oh, I'm really trying to bait Mike Kosecki to go inside. Okay. And I want him to go in there fast, quickly to my help if I can. But what Mike Kosecki's job is, it's to trying to get me to widen out so that he has space when he bangs it in. That's the whole point of, of the release uh, uh, from Mike Kosecki, okay? So here's, here's uh, let's, uh, let's go through it, boys. We, uh, we practice this. All right, Sean, are you ready? Okay, you're going to be my help inside, all right? Yep. All right, bud, here we go. I'm Teron Johnson. I got outside leverage. I'm trying to force him out, but Mike Kosecki is going to try and beat me uh, to the inside. All right, go ahead, guys. Oh, okay. They're looking at each other. They're looking at each other. Oh, he oversteps. He turns. Boom. High points it. Great job, Mike Kosecki. He's doing oh, the gritty. Oh, and we got the gritty as well from Here, Colin. Here's the thing. Probably let's go, better gritty. Than let's go through Kisecki. it one more time. I want to do it one more time. So when when Kisecki starts his stem, go ahead. Boom. This DB, he overextends and turns his shoulders, giving an easy lane right there. For Mike Kosecki to go in the quarterback, Mac Jones does a great job of throwing it up high so that the safety can't interfere with the play. Well-executed play in crunch time. Good job, Mac Jones, Mike Kosecki. Yeah, great job by those two, showing a little bit of chemistry down by the end zone where yep. Mike Kosecki is supposed to be doing his work there. You get a nice tall guy who can jump like that. You got to use him down there. Jones's touchdown pass to Kosecki kept a great drive from start to finish. It was the fourth time this season the Patriots got the ball with a chance to take the lead late in the fourth quarter, but the first time they were able to light up the scoreboard. Each of the three previous occasions, they turned it over on downs. That might have been their fate yesterday, if not for a big play 
on third down to another tight end. And for more on that, let's head to the drawing board. It's time now for board games brought to you by John Sewer and Drain Cleaning, the name to know when the drains don't flow. Ted, let's keep talking about this game-winning fourth quarter drive for Mac Jones and Hunter Henry. One of the best throws of the day from Mac Jones was on third and eight, deep down the middle of the field to Hunter Henry. Absolutely clutch situation. You have Courage Under Fire written at the top of the board. Break this one down for us. Why Courage Under Fire? Yeah, this is one of the clutch plays on that final drive right here. And the offensive line had an outstanding, an outstanding day. They really did. So they gave protection for Mac all day long. And on this particular play, when they needed to, they delivered for him and, and Mac delivered for the offensive line. But here's what you got. Right here, the Buffalo Bills, they're going to be playing like a cover three here, but they're going to overload blitz to this side, okay? They're going to overload blitz to this side. The Patriots have a trip right formation over here. Devontae Parker over here. Um, the good thing is, is you got your running back, Ramondre Stevenson, to the side of the overload blitz. So let's just go through that. So you have these two safeties. They kind of come down late. Max sees that, and you, you can tell that he sees that, and he makes a line call to the mic who is this safety right here, to slide to the left. So he sees that they're coming down, and he was absolutely right. So he correctly slides the line to the left here on this play, and these guys pick up this blitz perfectly. These two uh, safeties, they come in at the snap of the ball through the B and C gaps. The guard slides, center slides over here to take this D lineman, and they pick it up perfectly. All right, it collapsed a little bit late, but it was long enough for Mac to make a throw. So great job by the offensive line on this side to pick up the two blitzers and handle the four rushers on this side. And over here, you have Hunter Henry in the uh, number three position, okay? They're playing cover three. So cover three for this linebacker, he has hook to three, all right? I'll show you uh, what exactly that is in one second here. He has hook to three. He, this safety at the, at the snap of the ball goes to the middle of the field, and then you have your two corners dropping thirds. Cover three, okay? And on this play, Hunter Henry does a great job at the snap of the ball to stem his route out a little bit wide. So he wants to kind of get the defense thinking he's going out wide to create space so when he bangs it back inside. And there's another thing that helps Hunter Henry get some space uh, before he cuts in on the post is you have uh, uh, Hop, Pop, excuse me, Pop Douglas right here doing a little bit of a clear out route. So when he does a clear out route, he brings this linebacker who is in hook to three coverage with him. All right, and now... By doing that clear out, now Hunter Henry, by pushing this DB a little bit inside, he has space right here to cut inside. And Mac makes a great throw right in front of the safety where the DBs are squeezing down. He gets hit right as he catches the ball. First down, clutch throw. Great job out of the offensive line protecting right there. And I just thought that was a nice throw by Mac under pressure right in front of the safety and, uh, and behind that DB. Uh, it, was a, it was a hell of a play, and, and Mac had a, had, a, had a bunch of good plays in that game. Got to have it situation. The kind of throw that I would think garners some belief, Ted, Absolutely. from his teammates. He's worked well in the intermediate middle of the field all year there. Did it again on Sunday. He was 4-4 four for four when under pressure against the Bills for 42 yards, a touchdown, and a 150 rating. Man, Teddy J on the board just never gets old. Never gets old. Coming up at 6.30, this is a program that never gets old. Tune in for our Bella Early Edition with Trenny. Tom Giles is filling in for Trenny. So we'll have much more on the Patriots upset win over Buffalo and what it means for the team moving forward. But up next, what's popping? Pop Douglas with a big day against the Bills. Ted and I are back to break it all down right after this. Welcome back to The Breakdown. It is time for my report card. My report card is presented by the Massachusetts School of Law. And when you win a game as an underdog of more than a touchdown, you're going to get some good marks. Mm -hmm. Nothing but A's and B's, believe it or not, for the Patriots on this report card. As always, you can read more, much more, thousands of words more, mm -hmm. about the reasoning behind these grades on NBCSportsBoston.com. Ted, those are stand out for the grades. there. The quarterback grade of an A-. minus. Listen, yep. it wasn't perfect. You had a delay a game penalty. The football got a loose on a couple of different occasions. There were a couple missed throws, but he goes 25 for 30. He's over 80% in terms of his completion percentage. Mm -hmm. Over nine yards per attempt. He has the game-winning drive. He makes some checks at the line of scrimmage to be able to go to runs when there were pass plays called or vice versa that I thought worked out. 
really across the board, I thought a strong performance for Mac Jones. One of the best of his career. One of the best of his career, and I liked it early on. They had him kind of doing a lot of fakes and motions and, th you know, just kind of getting the defense off their heels a little bit. Nice, easy swing throws to get him in rhythm. Uh, they had him moving the pocket a little bit with some bootlegs. I loved how they kind of got him moving to calm him down a little bit. His body clock was on point the whole game, and he came through in the clutch like he needed to. Boy, in that first pass of the game, right out into the flat, to a dynamic athlete and Pop Douglas. Whoop! Made somebody miss. Picked up a few yards after the catch. And if we were handing out individual grades, might have been an A for, for the young Pop Douglas. The rookie had the best day of his career so far, setting career highs with 37 snaps, five touches, 54 receiving yards, and 20 rush yards. All 20 of those rush yards, by the way, coming on an end around play that helped set up a Patriots field goal. For more on that play, we head back to the drawing board. We're back out here for board games, brought to you by John Sewer and Drain Cleaning, the name to know when the drains don't flow. Ted, let's get into this a little bit more when it comes to the rookie. Out of Liberty, sixth round pick. Nobody knows who he is back in the spring. Pop Douglas, you've got what's popping at the top of the board for obvious reasons. This was, I know for you, one of the most enjoyable plays to watch from Douglas's day. Yeah, it was, it was, it's a great play. And it's, it's your, you know, jet sweep, okay? We've all seen jet sweeps. But I, what I liked about it was there was a, the deception that was built into the play design was really a great job by Bill O'Brien. So, uh, Pop Douglas, what's popping? Had a big day for the Patriots uh, yesterday. And this play, I just really like this play design. So let's let's go through it here. Okay. So you have trips to the right. Pop Douglas is off the line of scrimmage. Um, he will go in motion on the jet sweep. But really, what's important to know is the right as he gets the ball. So the quarterback turns and hands the ball off to him right as he's going by in the motion. That's it, clearly that's where the uh, you know that's where he gets the ball to take it to this side. But what you need to know is what is the offensive line doing and the running back to deceive the defense. Okay, so what they're doing is it's like a stretch play at the snap of the ball. Here comes Pop Douglas on the jet sweep. But what Mac does is he plays out the play fake to remind Ray Stevenson. It's like a stretch play over here. These linemen are going hard this way, hard, hard, selling the play action. This way, hard, 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 like it's a, a stretch run that way. So you have the defense, Phil, over-pursuing, over-pursuing, okay? Everyone's going this way because of this play fake, but here comes whoop on that uh, Jeep uh, jet sweep motion. Here comes Pop Douglas. Here's what you got to know, though, before he goes in motion. These, this DB has Pop Douglas in man-to-man -man coverage, but when he goes in motion, they bump the coverage. So Teron Johnson now has Pop Douglas man-to-man. -man. And what they do a good job of is once he gets the ball right here, at this point, you see Teron Johnson on the film having to go over these linebackers because he's got him man-to-man. -man. And so when he goes in motion, he has to go with them, but he's got to go through all this traffic to get to him, okay? And by having to go over the linebackers, it creates space uh, for, for uh, Pop Douglas to work, uh, work with. When he comes over here, you see uh, – when Pop Douglas comes over to this side, you see this DB soften up his coverage – because he doesn't want to get caught up in the wash. And here's the thing. When Teron Johnson comes over with Pop Douglas, Jalen Rager, who played a few snaps in this game, is right here waiting for him to block the guy that was covering him originally. And now it's one-on-one -on -one with this DB. Boom. He makes a great plate fake on this guy and goes for a, a nice 20-yard gain. It was a great play design, the deception, get everybody moving this way, forcing the coverage guy to go over the linebackers, creating more space. Jalen Rager making a really good block right here on the coverage. So that gives uh, Pop a little bit of space there. All he has to do is make a move on that cornerback. He does. Nice 20-yard gain. A lot of nice play designs for Pop Douglas in this game. Great design. Great day for Bill O'Brien. How often did we see Bill O'Brien call for motion, motion at the snap, something the Patriots really didn't do much of at all last year, Ted? We saw a lot of it on Sunday, creating some horizontal space in the Bills' defense and the Patriots finding ways to exploit it. So Pop Douglas, one of the stars of this game, but the defensive side had their share of standouts as well. How about this guy? Third-year defensive lineman Christian Barmore. He was getting after Josh Allen all day long to the tune of three hurries and a sack. That sack, which cost the Bills seven yards, proved to be a big play in this game. Just two plays later, Tyler Bass missed a 42-yard field goal. So what did Barmore do to get to Josh Allen? It's time for another Ted Neek, which was presented by Shaw's Perfecting the Art of Fresh. Ted, last week, Barmore was a force against the run. 
This week, he couldn't be blocked by the Bills' pass protection schemes. We got the entire Needham High group back out with us. We've got Dave joining us, Sean, Andrew, and Colin. They're going to be the Bills' offense. You're going to be one-man wrecking crew, Christian Barmore. So let's see what Ted Johnson can do against four high school <laughs> freak athletes right here. But this was a great play by Barmore, a big play in this game. And again, this guy has been hot. It just feels like everything he's doing up front is making an impact for this Patriots defense. He's probably playing the best he's played in the three years he's been here in the last few games. That's what it looks like to me. He seems like a man possessed. And this was a great job by, by, by Christian working this right guard who's a rookie, a rookie right guard for, uh, for the Buffalo Bills. Um, he, he, he does a good job of staying low and the, and the power in which he comes off the ball is, is, is incredible. So um, you guys know the play. He, if an offensive lineman, you got to understand as an offensive lineman, if you make the wrong movement and you, uh, you know, put your weight too far to one side than the other side, then you can really, as a defensive player, take advantage of that, okay? And that's what Christian Barmore did on this play, all right? It's going to be me and the right rookie uh, guard, otherwise known as David right here, one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see who's tougher. All right, David, you ready to go? Ready. All right, so it's not, it's not double teams. It's just one-on-one -on -one blocking. You guys ready to go? All right, here we go, Andrew. All right, let's go, boys. Here we go. Set, go. Overextends. Oh, now I got him. Once he overextends like this, I got him. So if you're a pass rusher, once you see edges, once you see the side of their jersey and not the breastplate like that, that's when Barmore knows he has them and he takes advantage of that. He rips right through there and goes right to the quarterback, makes the sack. This offensive guard overextended just enough that Christian saw that, boom, saw the edge, and then he went right up underneath him, made the sack. Those are the kind of plays we expect from Christian Barmore to make. He made it in this game. Seeing the, uh, that offensive lineman making that little mistake, he was able to capitalize on it, make a big play, and, uh, you know, get all that big money and cheddar and, and all the things hey, that come with hey, people hey, having sacks. It's coming, potentially. He's a year away, essentially, from free agency, but was thought to be a first-round talent back yep. in the 2021 draft. And now, especially, no Matthew Judon, yep. no Josh Uche in this game, who was banged up. You need the pass rush to come from somewhere. They got it from Christian Barmore on Sunday. How about these guys? Needed Rockets, 6-1 six six and and one, one, boys. Good right job. now. Absolutely rolling. Good luck against Framingham this weekend, boys. Thanks, guys. All right, Tuesday, 6 o'clock. Tune in for Quick Slants. Tommy Kern will share uh. his takes on the Patriots after their win over the Bills. It's presented by your local New England Honda dealers. Still to come, the Patriots offensive line had its best day of the season. So did they unlock their secret to success? What might that be? Monday Night Spotlight coming at you next. Okay, so we've discussed this Patriots offensive line throughout the show tonight, but it's been a point of contention since the start of camp, really. So let's finish up the program talking about this Patriots offensive line. Sunday's unit received the team's best pass blocking grade of the year from Pro Football Focus and their best run blocking grade in nearly two years. What made Sunday's starters different? How about Micah Wenu kicking out to right tackle? You know, I had a good conversation with Mike and uh, after the Raider game and, um, and ultimately, I think everyone thought that was uh, the best thing for us to do at this time, so. Um, went with it, had a good week, and you know, thought he did a good job for us. Mike, Mike's a great football player, um, you know, obviously. Um, <laughs> I don't think in his four years here he's played one position, you know. I mean, his rookie year he's playing jumbo tight end, then he's playing right tackle, then, you know, second year he was playing left guard, then back out to right tackle. This year, right guard, right tackle. I mean, so, um, you know, he has a lot of versatility. He can help our football team and, you know, appreciate him being out there. Let's get into the Monday Night Spotlight, which is presented by TouchView Interactive Display Panels, available at the Oakers Company. So, Ted, <laughs> is it as simple as that? <laughs> Moving to Mike Owenu out to right tackle now. He didn't even play last week, still a little bit banged mm -hmm. up, but he's back in the starting lineup. He's out on the edge, very different position out there, linemen will tell you, than being on the inside where he usually is. Is that the simple fix? Is this offensive line simply all better now moving forward? I, I, I think it might be. You know, and I love that Bill said that, you know, well, we thought it might be a good idea this week to put him at right guard. We've been telling you forever, Bill, to put him at right tackle, and they did, and it, it worked out. But, yeah, I think he just provides stability. You don't have to worry about that right tackle position that's been a uh, – let's, let's face it, it's been the Achilles heel of the offensive line all, all season long. And so he's a stud out there. He's proven he can do it. And then everyone else just falls in line. And don't forget, you know, I want to give credit to Cole, Cole Strange, who had a rough uh, start to this season. I thought he had a really good game. 
game at left guard. So you've got, you got stability at the left tackle, left guard center position. City so you can manage at the right guard position as long as you got Mike on the way playing the right tackle. Cole Strange, I thought, as you mentioned, had some good moments as well. He's been grinding away just to get back on the field. So nice for them as a group to have a little bit more continuity, some yeah. more familiar faces up there. One thing I wanted to ask you, Ted, because it's nice to have the healthy offensive line when it comes to your run game. But how about the scheming? that Bill O'Brien is doing with the motion. If you're a linebacker and you're seeing all this motion at the snap that the Patriots have now used over the course of this past game against the Bills, what does that do to your eyes? And how does that maybe open up the downhill run game that we know the Patriots favor. Yeah, that, that, the Pop Douglas uh, Jets we play that we showed highlighted the kind of the deception that I, I really liked in the in the kind of play designs in this game. And if you got you know a defense that's a little bit overzealous like the Buffalo Bills defense, you can kind of uh, screw with their reads a little bit and get them looking at one thing when it's really something else. And so it can help an offense that might have deficiencies from a talent standpoint. Help them with these deceiving kind of concepts. They did it in this game. And we hope that this is kind of the offense we see moving forward for the rest of the year. Yeah, even if those motion players aren't getting the ball, it's orbit motion, it's jet yep. motion, it's fast motion right across the line of scrimmage there. And it can really, I think, mess with their heads. And all of a sudden you see a run go around the edge. Yep. Now all of a sudden you're leaning towards the edge. It opens you up, makes you vulnerable to the middle. You like their ability to maybe make this a game down in Miami next week and maybe even win it, Ted. Keep something rolling here. Are you kidding me? Why not? I mean, their, their confidence has got to be at an all-time high. They're 2-5. and five. It doesn't matter. They played their best, most complete game this past weekend. Miami's a little bit down. So, you, if you get Miami, baby, might have a season, Phil. Ted, great job as always. Thanks again to the Needham High Rockets. Stick around. we got early edition coming up right now. Much more on the Pats.